y'all doing? Y'all know what it is. <laughs> this is full of um, margarita mix and cranberry juice. Be good. So y'all, it's time for another chit chat video. We have a lot to talk about. I'm going to be retwisting my hair. My hair looks lovely. I washed my hair not too long ago. This is the epitome of four category fat four category hair. You see that? Um, I'm gonna be retwisting my hair. I'm gonna be using African Pride's leave-in cream as my leave-in. Can y'all see that? And then I'm gonna be using Eden's Beauty natural curl defining cream i have not been using this stuff so i figured i know that's not zooming in so let's just go ahead and get started all right y'all how y'all been doing so a lot's been going on with me a lot i don't like that oh hell hold on but i have some good things going on all of my positive affirmations and manifestations i've been saying over the course of three years seriously sorry y'all over the course of three years everything that i've been speaking into existence is coming now the problem with me someone like me who has gad which is general anxiety disorder general anxiety general anxiety disorder i'm a type of person that gets extremely excited and is overkill and anxious about it that is counterproductive so i've tried to learn how to calm down Today, in general, excuse me, I ended up going to the urgent care because my body is like on the edge of like, I'm done. Um, let me go ahead and do my hair, y'all. I am having some pain, y'all. And this is the type of pain I've had before, but the frequency and how long I've been dealing with it it's too much. I've been having the pain off and on since February. I know that's sad, but it reached its peak today to the point to where um, when I went to, I mean, my, my blood pressure has been spiked because of it. Um, and um, the doctor was basically like, I mean, in, in addition to that, of course, I have anxiety. So anytime you you tell anyone in the medical field that you are experiencing some type of um, stress to your body, they have you to perform a, I forgot the exactly exact medical terminology. So I had to fill out a form that goes over you know, I give you the certain type of questions, you know, how are you feeling? Do some days you deal, do you feel tired? Is this bothering? Is this affecting your work? Um, some days do you feel like harming someone? Do you feel like harming yourself? You know, it has all these different questions and it's separated in depression versus anxiety, right? So we get through it and then I'm there purposely because I'm in pain, right? And I need something for this pain. I mean, everything from my feet all the way up to my up here and then my hands all the way down it's like a numbing throbbing pain and i have some underlying issues that i just don't feel comfortable right now sharing with you guys um but we know where it's from but this is the most it's been and i'm on certain medication i'm on, I'm on gabapentin i take it twice a day i think i'm on like 400 milligrams it's not doing shit i did my edibles not doing anything okay the problem is, is that I've allowed the pain to get so out of control that now it's hard to manage. So I, I had to go to the urgent care. Like two o'clock, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to the urgent care. He's like, what? I said, look, I've been dealing with pain for seven days. I was even sleeping in the guest bedroom for like three days straight because I, I couldn't even sleep. So they gave me a, uh, what did they give me, girl? They gave me a steroid shot which I was okay with, and she upped my Lexapro. Look, I don't mind telling y'all, she upped my Lexapro because doing this this um, self-assessment, she's like, well, let's talk about your depression. And I'm like, I'm not depressed. I'm here because I have anxiety. I'm really anxious. I'm starting some new stuff in my life, and I'm very anxious to get it started. And I'm just, I'm excited, and it's just a lot going on. She's like, and she looked at me, she was like, um, uh, ma'am, she said, ma'am, the top part here is the depression. Your bottom part is your anxiety. Your depression, you score twice as much as your anxiety. I was like, 
I, I was quiet. Look, I'm the type of person. I listen to the medical staff. Now, I have my own opinions, but I listen. Because I, I, I didn't go to school for 500 years, so I'm listening, right? And she's like, you're, you're, you are twice as much. You scored twice as high on your depression part. I was like, but I don't feel. She said, well, it could be you've been in pain for so long that it's causing you to feel depressed. The anxiousness, the anxiousness, you know, of course you have, I have GAD, but the depression is probably coming from you not feeling good. I said, okay, that makes sense. So up some of my other medications, which I'm look, I am not one to be like, I'm not doing that. I'm taking all my medication, okay? So, and then of course she asked me, she's like, are you doing any type of therapy or anything? And I'm like, I just don't have, she's like, she looked at me, she, I, she's like, I don't know. I said, I really just don't have the time, y'all. I just don't have. And I will say this, um, I did go ahead and set up a session for a therapist, when was this, like three months ago, and I had so much going on. And this is the thing that this MP told me, and this is the first time I've ever heard this from someone in the medical field. She said, honestly, the therapy is what you should be using, and that's your first step, that's your first plan, okay? The medication is what you use in conjunction. I forgot what she considered the therapy. I think it's that that's conventional. But she said the, the medication is in secondary and you it works best when you when you use that with the therapy. So I'm listening to it and I get it. And so I'm gonna have it on my to-do list to go ahead, go ahead and utilize my company's six free sessions um a year and i'm really going to do that because even though i don't feel like you know i feel like things are relatively okay for me but clearly they're not COVID is making its rounds again um my manager had COVID a couple of days ago um and there are some weird type of issues with a lot of people are having issues with their allergies like i know jb was having issues with his allergies and I mean, it was it was like up there. And so, yeah, it's just so much going on and stuff. So um, what else? What else? What else? JB's doing good with his swimming lessons, child. He goes three days out of the week. And I think it's really good for him. And he's enjoying it. It's a lot of physical activity. But these kids need that. They really, really, really do. They need it. So like I said, got not a lot more going on in the personal life. The rain in Texas finally, and it's finally cooling down. Like in the 90s, early 80s. Finally, right? So YouTube. What I'm watching on YouTube, y'all. What do I have here? I'm still doing the true crime. The integrations. Is that how you say it? Y'all, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um... By the way, I'm going to get to this. The Deliverance, I'm going to get to them when I'm watching. But there is a little documentary about the Demon House, which is what the Deliverance, the movie Deli Deliverance is based on. If you want to watch it, it is on YouTube. It's almost an hour. I saw it on there. I wasn't interested, so I got out. But again, it's on YouTube and it's referred to as Demon House. Um, still looking at videos of people getting evicted. Y'all, I just... Like, I saw one video of a, a young woman who literally, like, vlogged the entire process. She was getting her stuff out. And I, I'm pretty sure that is a very embarrassing and, and stressful ordeal to deal with, to do. But it, it blows my mind how many people are like, let's say they said, let's say the eviction is supposed to happen at 8.30 and now it's 8.45. I mean, this young woman was literally like, maybe they're not coming. Maybe we could just stay here. And I'm thinking, girl, this is a court mandated thing. The sheriff's coming. You need to, you need to go ahead and get in that U-Haul and get to, get to work. No. I'm also am watching, um, I gotta put her name down here. She is a professional cleaner and she does videos of her cleaning her house. Yeah, every now and then I like to watch those type of videos. The thing that makes her different is that she does share a lot about what's going on in her personal life. And I guess she, her and her husband had to officially evict their adult daughter. I can only imagine this, that again, that's really stressful. They had to evict their adult daughter. 
Um, she also got a couple of people telling her that oh, maybe you shouldn't be putting all this on social media. Me personally, I get that sometimes you have to have a way to share your stuff and, and how, how do I put it? Not necessarily expose, but release this information to, for you. I'm a type of person that I would be very cautious in putting that type of information out on social media. The same thing with, unfortunately, Linda Lynn. Y'all know Linda. Linda down in, in, in that, um, she's, I think she's in Baton Rouge. My girl Linda Lynn down, down in Louisiana, she's going through hell with her ex. I mean, absolutely. It's, it's a bit much. Um, and she's been going through some issues with... I guess she had someone, oh y'all, the hair is going everywhere. She had someone trying to break into her apartment. Um, and she's had people mention on her video, you know, to be careful. Because all everything that's, that she says, unfortunately, if her ex was smart enough, he can use that against her when it comes to court. Because I think they're still battling, battling full custody of their children. That's just, that is a bit much, so... I mean, same thing. I think that she needs to be very careful with what she what she shares on this platform. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've been seeing on the YouTube, y'all. So let's get into the movies and stuff because I have been watching a lot of TV. Sorry, y'all. So for some reason, girl, I wanted to rewatch Showgirl. The cheesy. <laughs> The cheesiest dangle and I just I have no idea why but I just realized her good Judy black friend is cousin Faith from Soul Food. I just realized that 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 her friend and showgirl the black girl the token black girl who is the seamstress for the showgirls is cousin Faith. I'm like you know what at least you were very likable as, as um, showgirls but not too much on um you know not too much with soul food y'all what's going on with this hair okay i'm trying to make sure i have enough pullback so what else am i watching child i watch classic with jennifer lopez jennifer lopez has been in the news lately but we ain't gonna talk about why she's in the news i'm talking about the movie the boy next door now i saw clips of this a while back and so overall the movie is about a uh, separated woman with her teenage son and their neighbor becomes obsessed with her after they have a one night fling. She assumed that he was a young adult, probably early 20s. Well, baby, she shows up to the school and he's in class. And she's like, what, what, what are you doing? And he's asking for the damn syllabus. Now... To make it PG or whatever they, they label this stuff, they put him at 19 years old. You know, in the movie, he's 19. But, um, child, I rewatched that. I completely forgot. Like, in real life, the guy that played uh, the actor, the young adult, he was really like 26, 27 at the time. And Jennifer Lopez was double grown, right? Double grown. So, child, that sex scene where he's like on her, he's kissing her, and he undo her, undress her, and he was like, let, let me just love you. When I tell you, I started gagging because someone in the comments said this sex scene was more intense than in the entire Fifty Shades of Grey. That sex, I wonder who the hell wrote that sex scene. Did Jennifer Lopez? Now, I will say that Jennifer Lopez purposely picked him for the movie. And he's a young little Latina, too. I think he played on 911, the actor. But, child, when I tell you that sex scene was like, oh my God. Like, are, are, are you serious? A bit much. I often wonder how actors get to. Okay, girl, move on. We're gonna get to it, girl. girl we're gonna get to the, to the deliverance. Um, reasonable, reasonable doubt on Hulu, y'all. I watched this. It is a great drama, a little sexy, sexy. 
this particular season has Morris Chestnut fine ass. He's playing an, a lawyer. I'm not going to give too much away, but I'm going to tell you this. The scene, how they introduce Morris Chestnuts, Chestnuts, how they introduce his chocolate ass. This series has, they, they don't leave nothing to the imagination. They have sex scenes that are very, very uh, uh, realistic, but it's still some secret, some covering. You ain't going to get full on nudity, right? They introduce Morris Chestnuts ass. A full and I rewinded that scene three times just to make sure I didn't know if it was him or not so I had to make sure if that was real I'm like is that more shit let me go ahead and rewind this <laughs> three times to make sure that was him Child, he, oh my god y'all so I am loving season two I have no idea what to expect but it's going um, I'm also going back and watching Only Murderers in the Building. They are so silly on this show, you guys. I may have to go back and rewatch a couple of scenes because I keep forgetting what's going on. Because there's a lot of moving parts in um, Only Murderers with the, in the Building. And I have no idea how Martin Short and the other Martin were able to get so many top... I mean, they have, they have everyone. Matthew Broderick, um, the woman from... Um, um, devil's wear prada they have some top names coming even even if it's just a, they had the the singer the main singer from youtube from they had the main singer from youtube on season one i mean they have people popping in i mean they're big labels too but geez this is i just love i absolutely love this this series so anyway let's get into it the deliverance so Lee Daniels' ass decided he want to go all out Stephen King on us and put Glenn Kloss in here. So I'm not going to say this right now. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I will say the movie, in my opinion, was very predictable. Um, I about fell out when I saw Glenn Close. <laughs> Glenn Close coming in like her name was Crystal or Melissa, and she always dated black men. Ever since she was in middle school, when Jerome let her borrow his number two pencil. She always been doing it, right? So she has a biracial daughter. Um, but the scene I really feel out is when they were all in each other's laps. Glenn Close was, was doing a weave. Her daughter was braiding the other girl's hair. I was like, are you serious, y'all? My, my battery's about to run out. But let me just say this. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 5. Lee Daniels, in my opinion, is a little bit better than Tyler Perry. He had the wigs look better. But when I tell you, I fell asleep because it was boring as hell. Heavy, heavy language, meaning it starts off the first five minutes. They're popping off with language. The kids are cursing. The dog is cursing. The, the, the demon is cursing. So the one scene that had me where I fell asleep on, I'm like, this, this shit is uh, ridiculous. Oh, Monique is also in it too, right? Looks good, by the way. There's a scene where Glenn Close comes up and she's clearly, she's been taken over by something. She ain't got her teeth are all jagged, shark-like. Her eyes are, and I'm looking at this, y'all. Maybe I've been, I was like, she looks like that character from No David. And then she's running around on the, on the ground. I'm like, oh, you know, David is out of control. Or Glenn Close is out. Everyone's talking about it on social media because this was hot right now. But I'm like... I would never watch this shit again. I, I didn't finish it, and I'm not finishing it. I'm not interested. Apparently, it's based on a true story. Um, and I'm like, girl, I don't see how. Because as soon as I felt something, I would have moved my ass out. But I know not everybody can do that. Now, one thing I will say, because I always have been into, not really into, but interested in the paranormal. If you would look at it, most, I would say a good 80%, no, not 80, about 70% of poltergeist issues that are going on, there are teenagers in that house. Um, teens, kids are very easy for spirits to get on because they're innocent. They have a light. So the demons latch on them. Kids are really hard. They can't really fight it off, which is why you must train up your child in it, right? So anyway, y'all, the, the deliverance <laughs> didn't deliver nothing for my ass because I stopped watching it. But let me know if y'all saw it. Let me know what y'all watching. The only thing else, I am watching Fargo, the series. I did rewatch Fargo, the movie, because I think it's quote, cute. Y'all, another movie. Did you see how my camera just turned off? Anyway, y'all, another movie I saw, which was so old school 80s, Raised in Arizona.
I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And look, the one um, woman that came in is actually the cop, the pregnant cop from Fargo. I forgot her name, but she's a really good actress. But I hadn't seen that movie in a while, and I love that movie. I absolutely love um, with John. Y'all, I don't know the names. Blame it on the alcohol. But y'all, that is it. I'm just retwisting my hair. I'm going to make some of these sections smaller. Um, y'all, pray for me, and I'll pray for y'all. Keep me in your prayers. I really need to start listening to my body and slow down. I make the point now to where everything that I've been praying for and asking God for, it is happening right now. And for some reason, my body is like, shh. It's like, I got it, but how long? It's almost like, do I deserve it? I'm second guessing myself, which I know it's only coming from self-doubt and I should not do that. Not necessarily self, self guessing, but I'm like, afraid that I'm going to lose it now that I have everything that I have that I wanted so I just need to be praying for myself and saying okay you got it let go be appreciative so y'all please 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 pray your words out there please keep me in your prayer that I can learn how to get my shit together but all right y'all I'm done I need to continue to do my hair and um finish this margarita <laughs> Rita. and that's it y'all thank you so much for watching and thank you as always to all of my new subscribers take care bye